welcome to the Brotherhood of Gaming. It's been a hot minute, but we have a special treat for you guys. A long time coming. You know it. We know it. We have been looking for these types of people for ages, and we finally found one. We got one. I would like to introduce Jules. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Yeah. And thank you for having me. No problem. It is a, it, it's very much a pleasure to have you here. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Who are you and what do you do? Well, my name is Jules Giselle, um, and I'm a voice actor. I'm a singer and a voice actor, and I've done quite a number of different projects, including this video game and several others and some animation. So there's a very long laundry list. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my friends, so, just to narrow it that down. That is I. <laughs> yeah, she has played Farah in Tales of Eternia. Confirmed, <laughs> we found it. Uh, th big shout outs to Kevin Miller for pointing us in the, in the direction and we have made the connection and proved it to be legit. <laughs> I heart Kevin. Yay. <laughs> Yay. All right. So um, na naturally, because Tales of Eternia was a game that came out 21 years ago at this point. Man, that would have been. <laughs> that would have been. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's a long time ago, huh? <laughs> yeah. That would have been amazing if we had made it just in time for its anniversary. <laughs> Say that again. Sorry. That would have been amazing if we had made it just in time for the anniversary. Oh, I know. Yeah, right? <laughs> that would have been awesome. So, but yes. All right. So, naturally, it's not expected that you will remember a lot of things from the production from so long ago, but you might yeah. remember where you were. So, Jules, yeah. tell us about wh what your career was like at the time when you were recording for Tales of Eternia. So, <clears throat> obviously going back 21 years ago, which is hard to believe how fast time flies, um, we were working out of Webtown Productions, and there was quite a few things, a number of projects that I worked with them and, and the team, and Kevin, obviously. Um, yeah, there's a very warm place in my heart for them. Um, we got to work on a lot of fun projects, and this was one of them. And as I was mentioning to you before, it, it, there's a lot of things that I've worked on that I've not been credited. And and a, a big portion of what I do is also very confidential. So I don't always have a lot of information at the time I'm working. Not until later and sometimes never. So unfortunately, that, that kind of leans for me not always remembering. So my apologies. <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, all right. So what, what do you remember about the process for auditioning for Tales of Eternia? If you can tell us about that. Sure. Yeah. Well, auditions, um, they haven't changed a whole lot except <laughs> for them now being done primarily from home. Whereas back in, in those days, you had to go into a studio or in, in my scenario, um, my agent <laughs> called me in and I went in to record to their studio and then they submitted and and it was just the process where you get here's you know the type of character and you just kind of read for it in some capacity you don't get a lot of information so um, a big portion of what you do submit when you're going out for a part such as Farah or Knights or any of the others um, is just connecting in some way shape or form to what this character is about and what their story is and and just kind of finding the nuggets that you can relate to personally in some way and you know just approach that in in the delivery and so yeah so that's what happened and then there's a call back <laughs> um uh, sometimes it's just, hey, you're you're getting the job and we'd like to book you and check a veil. And sometimes it's um, a callback. I think in this case, it was a, a direct check a veil booking. Um, in other cases, it's we'd like to see a directed callback. And then they put you kind of under the gun with the actual director or the actual producer. And as opposed to just a blind submission. And you go from there. And sometimes it works. And sometimes... Um, in some scenarios that I've gotten called back, I've gotten not that particular job that I auditioned for, but something else. And so there's a lot of times you just never know where it's <laughs> going to lead you. You kind of have to have that um, men mentality of rolling with the punches at all given times because you just don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, blessings come from weird places sometimes. <laughs> they absolutely do. So I guess, I guess it's kind of true what they say like uh, in Hollywood. Uh, sometimes you just fail upward. <laughs> 
And I'm not kidding. There's been times where I'm like, I didn't get that part, but but my agent will call him like six months or seven months even later. And he'll say something like, oh, I remember that thing you submitted for. I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, if I, to if I'm honest with you, I submit at least 15 to 20 projects a day, every day. So, and that's between booked sessions and other things for other projects or some things are requested. So when you're doing that many, you do the math. I'm not a math person, but that's a lot. That's a lot that you're doing and submitting. So when I was kind of explained to you a little bit earlier too, is it's like submit, forget, and on to the next, submit, forget, on to the next. That's how I have to kind of function because if I get too attached to all of it and 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 try to remember every little thing that I do, I may go bonkers already more than I already am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is crazy. So it's crazy, but it's fun. I love it. I love the the pressure of of the quick turnarounds. I love, um, you know, being put in the, in the hot spot. I think. Um, is where I'm most comfortable. I'm most comfortable being uncomfortable from where other people might be uncomfortable. I'm like, let's do it. <laughs> let's go. Um, and, and so that's just the nature of, of the work and, and the day, day to day schedules and things like that. But, um, I, I just enjoyed it. But when you're playing some of you know the clips that I, I don't remember who put together the the clips but thank you that was very awesome of, of them um it just shows the where you know where we all start with wh whatever our thing is whether it's art a graphic artistry writing um voice acting anything really it's like where you start is so different than where you'll end up, you know, and the, if you just keep going and going and working at whatever your craft is and, and um, reaching that level of mastery, when you look back at your older work, work, it's almost like, God, that was not good. <laughs> well, but, but at the same time, that, I imagine I'm it's... like, I'm embarrassed. Oh, no. But at the same time, I imagine you got to feel somewhat proud because everybody had yeah. to start somewhere and you, and you are where yes. you are now. Um, yes. So, uh, let's see if we can uh, joggle some memories. Is there anything, uh, do you remember meeting any of the cast members? Can you tell us about what it was like to work with Kevin Miller, if you remember? I remember Kevin because he was there for m more than, I honestly, I can say I lost count how many times I worked with him because it was very often. But the thing of how voiceover works, you don't really work with other actors at least I didn't um I read my roles I think a handful of times and by handful I can count twice that I was at, in a vocal booth actually um with another actor and one of them most recently was for Salma's Big Wish which is an animated feature um that's on Netflix and some other streaming platforms and what have you and then other than that some things that I did for like Mattel <laughs> you know <laughs> some some toys and games and things like that but no I'm in my vocal booth or or you know if I'm in a session it's usually me by myself and that is it their ensemble work is very rare in voice acting very very rare Sure. So no, unfortunately, I don't even get to meet them. Um, it's all very just, I I don't want to use the word secluded, but it is. <laughs> it's a little bit of, of, we're all in our own little bubbles. And then they piece everything that we do um, in terms of the work, the recording, the audio, in whatever capacity that the um, directors and the producers want. And that's it. And then once we finish our job, we go on home and that's it. Now, when you recorded for Tales of Eternia, now granted, this is something you might not remember. Uh, you do remember that you played the character of Farah, but it, mm -hmm. it's, it's also known, at least with Kevin Miller, we found out that he actually played more characters on that game than he may have remembered because we know he played the main mm -hmm. he, he played the main male lead character Reed Herschel. But if you can listen carefully with other characters, he reuses his voice for uh, like some summons, like for a Volt character. Do you recall uh, at all playing other? potentially other characters in the game that um at all 
Absolutely. I mean, that's that's kind of a given. So when you play a certain role, whether it's like a lead or supporting kind of character, um, you may get asked to do any, you know, subsequential characters or smaller roles where it's maybe just uh, one or two lines here and there. So that's kind of a given usually um, because it just makes sense. You're already in the booth and if you're able to do more than um, if you have a range in your uh, ability as far as an actor and, and performer or voice actor, then you're definitely going to be asked <laughs> to do um, multiple things. <laughs> you definitely wear multiple hats. I, however, don't always remember, especially going back that long. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it, it, it's totally fine. But yeah, because there's another female main character named Meredy who spoke in an alien language. So. Uh, if you don't remember speaking any like uh, weird language for a long, for a good set of the script, uh, you probably didn't play her as well. <laughs> no, I don't recall doing that. <laughs> yeah, because because it's so unique and um and it's so yeah, it, it's so well spoken that it's like there's no way you wouldn't remember doing that. <laughs> yeah, that exactly things like that that we, that stand out in such a way that they're, they're like. Ugh. I'll never forget that because I can't. <laughs> um, no, I don't recall doing that. <laughs> okay, now just for fun, I just sent you a small portion of the script from the earliest <gasps> part in the game. Oh! <laughs> now, it, now this is a scene between Reed and Farah, and uh, yes, uh, uh, at the beginning of the game, they're in their little forest clubhouse hangout. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's been a little while since they've been since they've been together. It's more of a relaxing scene, a very chill. Uh, until towards the end when su something suddenly catches Far Farrah's eye and the scene gets a little bit more impactful. Uh, mm. Would you like to try to do a read of uh, of this with me? Uh, of course, we don't, oh, we don't have... We, that we don't, would be so awesome. Yeah, yes! Course, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have <laughs> Kevin here to do the role of Reed, but, <laughs> but we do happen to have <laughs> but somebody. But we have William. <laughs> <laughs> and according to IMDb and the Voice Acting Alliance, I am one of y'all. So. Well, <laughs> I think you you will do a perfectly read for read. <laughs> well, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> All right, uh, so you can see it, right? Yes, I can. Let me just view it really quickly. So, all right, so, I am ready. So, all right, guys, we're about to hear a, a professional in action. <laughs> all, right, all right, you've had twenty years to get better. Let's see if you did. <laughs> Wow, I am in the hot seat now. Oh, see, I, now I'm dropping. <laughs> you blew it! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, and I'm actually in my vocal booth too. So, yo, let's do this. All right. Yo, let's do it. Okay. <clears throat> huh, is that? Oh, wow, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. I was only seeing part of the script. I was on the wrong part. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Okay, sorry, let's do uh, pick up. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, uh, Reed looks up into the clubhouse and he sees Farrah just hanging out up there and she spies him back. Huh, is is that? Reed? Farrah? Hey, long time no see. How's it going? Did your hunt go well? Oh, I just took what I need for today. Nothing real hard about that. Wow, I have to admit it. You sure are handy with your sword. <laughs> Farah, sure is a surprise to see you here. Yeah. Lately I've been busy in the fields. Reed, you still come here every day? Yeah. You've liked this place ever since we were small. So, what's up today? Playing hooky? Of course not! There's something different about the sky, so I came to take a look. The sky? Don't the colors look different? Uh, do they? I can't say I've noticed. It's definitely weird. I think something's going to happen. Yeah? Like what? I don't know. Maybe something is about to come falling from Celestia. Don't sound so thrilled. Anything coming from there is bound to be bad news. How would you know? There hasn't been contact between our worlds for 2,000 years. Anyway, life is meant to be simple. When things stay the way they are, that is true happiness. 
Here we go again. Reed's philosophy. You never change. Oh, yeah? Well, maybe I'm just that way because of all the trouble that a certain somebody caused. Uh, Farah? Hey, over there. What? What's, what's, what's that? Uh-oh. Farah, run! Reed! <sighs> Farah, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. But something came down, didn't it? I'm gonna have a look. <laughs> and that's a wrap. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Joggle any memories? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but yes, uh, that was uh, that was great. It was actually fun to relive some of that uh, good old magic. Now, nice surprise, by the way. Nice oh, way I, to kind of got... like <laughs> throw me a curveball. I'm like, I love it. <laughs> well, I've got the rest of the script here, but of course, it's like, <laughs> yeah, we'll do that some other day. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, moving on. And now, of course, we could talk Tales of Eternia all day, every day. And believe me, we <laughs> have. But you have quite a lucrative career, and there are other things that we want to talk about. And one, of course, I'm looking forward to, but we'll savor that one. Uh, let's see. I understand one of your earliest roles was actually voicing a character for R.L. Stein's Goosebumps. Yes. <laughs> so, well, that's a recent one as far as, uh, oh, actually, no, it's an older one. And then there was a new thing that I just did recently that kind of threw me off. That's yeah. also R.L. Stein's. Yeah, that's and why I, I'm yeah, so I was going to bring that up because in a way yeah. it's, it sort of came full circle because one of your earliest roles is doing a character for R.L. Stein's Goosebumps and then last year, apparently, you played a character in a story club, Caroline, Coraline, Caroline, mm -hmm. Caroline. Mm -hmm. So tell us about working with the spooky of spooks. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a whole other style of performance that definitely digs into another part of um, my <laughs> psyche, in a way, if you will. Um I like doing creepy, kind of scary, ghosty stuff. I don't, I don't mind it at all. Although it does kind of leave me feeling a little weird after um, the performance is done, and it's so opposite of, you know, characters like Pharaoh or characters like Knights, where it's, it's just a different dynamic. Um, or even some of the Barbie stuff I've done. <laughs> it's all just kind of like up here, where this is more gritty and someone's about to die or it's it's there there's just an element um in in terms of of the style of the direction of it it just it opens up a whole other side of me that i don't get to use all the time Ooh. so um but i like it <laughs> yes <but. laughs> it was fun no i i have absolutely a fun time um, doing it goosebumps again, you know, because of the nature that it's so far back in time. <laughs> you know, you're going back to 98. Like, this is the very beginning and the start of my career that I, you know, was, you know, just learning as I go and, and had some really great mentors and um, things that opened up the doors to actually start in voiceover. I had no idea what it was. I was originally a singer and that's what I was doing. And I was signed to a record label and, you know, performing and touring and writing, recording. Um, and then that kind of shifted gears. And then voiceover was like, oh, by the way, here, let's throw you into this. And I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I just went with it. <laughs> okay. So uh, now one of the other major characters that uh, you have recently played no no it's not too recently it's it's been a little while now uh let's go on to sega and talk mm -hmm. about uh, your role as the famed character knights from knights uh, into dreams tell us yes, please nice. tell us all about how from the very beginning how you got to be involved with sega how you got mm -hmm. that role and how it came to be what it was <clears throat> So, again, obviously, um, again, through the process of uh, audition, <laughs> um, obviously, I went into the agency's studio, recorded some pieces, and, and just off of the direction that the in-house engineer that 
we have there. He kind of had a, a, a a good idea. He's actually, <laughs> I have to credit Brian Burge. I just do. He's, I've known him almost my entire career and he and his former wife, but, um, were very instrumental in guiding the direction. You know, I, I didn't start taking voiceover classes till much later, but I had really great coaches and mentors and things like that, that I learned so much, um, hands on. And so I submitted the audition, got the call back, and then um, actually what was interesting is at the time, because I also did on camera more often than I do now, um, because voiceover kind of just took over, <laughs> <laughs> but I had another project that I was actually um, getting check availed for, which was, oh, what is the name? It was another game, but it was a karaoke singing game, and it was on camera. And the problem was I booked the night's role at the same time that this was shooting. So I had to choose. <clears throat> it was, do I do the karaoke video game <laughs> or do I do nights? Uh, and um, <laughs> a wise choice indeed. <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you. And I just looked at, I don't know, my, my, I mean, obviously my gut has kind of guided me my whole life, but it, there was just something drawing me to to that project more so than the other one. Not that the other one was bad. I I wished I could have done both. It just didn't work out timing wise. And so, um, the scheduling for nights was quite lengthy. If I do recall, it was like one or two weeks, and I was there every day or every other. Day. I, like I said, I can't. I couldn't recall. I think some days I was there two days, three days in a row, and then a break, and then. Um, but they were lengthy hours. It was a quite a lot of dialogue to record. Um, and the director from Japan, his name is escaping me. I'm so embarrassed. What is his name? Do you happen to know his name? Is uh, it Ishikara? Is it? Uh, is, uh, we'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> but he. I mean, you and, think I would like Takashi Lizuka or? I, that sounds familiar. Let, yeah, I'm pretty let's sure. Look that, it up. Yeah, I'm pretty let's sure. Yeah. You, me having did the retrospective just eight months ago, you think I'd I'd <laughs> remember this? Because <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's t t the director is Takashi Lizuka. I know it's kind of his baby. Yeah, that sounds absolutely. Um, Correct. Uh, I think see. that is. Yep. So he and his, yep, to him and his team were there for the session, which I love. Honestly, um, things are so different now. Before you'd be in, in the booth with the director and the producer and the dialect coach, which I had also for this particular um, character because it had an accent, it had a, a British accent, and that's not normal for me. Obviously, I'm American, I'm not British. So, oh my god, um, you, you pulled it off so well! <laughs> did I? Thank you. You know what's amazing though? And, and, and here's the thing so the dialect coach was, he didn't have to correct me very much because I just. I, I channeled Hermione from Harry Potter. Oh, <laughs> and I okay. Was like, um, yeah. So I, Emma Watson, whatever. So I just had her in my head as I'm reading these lines and how how she, how would she say it? Obviously, with under the other direction of the gender neutral voice, which is what was also part of um, the direction that he wanted. Um, and so I just kind of put those things together and it and it worked. Um, but at the time, they also had a video. I was being video um, recorded, right? So mm -hmm. as I'm reading the lines, they could go back to animation because what I was recording to, and it's called sync to picture. I don't know if you're familiar with these terms. Uh, um, no. Some of you might be. So sync to picture just means that what what's happening, you have your script, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have a monitor inside of your vocal booth alongside your script. And there's you can watch where the character enters or exits a scene and how long, you know, he has until he has to speak the line. So um, I was doing that, but the but Knights was not drawn in. It was like a, a black blob. <laughs> so he, he wasn't fully, um, you know, graphic 
developed as far as graphically and artistically. He was just kind of a, a black outline of the character. And so I had that to work with. And as the video uh, recording was happening, they were um, including some of the facial expressions in the animation after. So in post, they were reviewing whatever my lines were and how I was reading them so that they can incorporate it into the character, which was pretty fun. Awesome. So, um, yeah, there's a little tidbit for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, the motion, cap motion capture stuff? Not really. No, this was just a regular video recording um, because I I wasn't actually the body that was used to, to move the character. That would be the motion capture stuff. Um, this was just facial capture, I guess you could say, maybe. Okay. Yeah. yeah honestly, yeah. I, I don't know how they'd be able to motion capture for nights. <laughs> the character's so I know. I, I think there was a couple times where I'm like... Rihala, you coward! Let him go! Oh my you know, god! Like some... <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, like, what are your favorite lines? Like, I can tell you one of my favorites. Do a lies? <laughs> oh yes, do a lies. <laughs> Come on, Will. Can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just sent you uh, one of my favorite lines in the game. Oh, Will, it's okay. We need to protect your dreams. It will be all right. No matter what happens, we'll be friends forever. Isn't that right, Helen? <laughs> Come on, let's show him what your courage can do. <laughs> Screw Helen. It's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that line. It's so touching. You know, this character, I had no idea. I know that I was going into it a little blindly in the sense that it never had a voice to begin with as we spoke about that earlier right yes it, it, um which is uh, fascinating now that we think about it it's like wow 11 mm -hmm. years of this character existing in comics and uh, games and uh, and other mediums and, and the character has just gone without a and we know the character can talk um right. but, but all the all of these characters for the most part have gone <clears throat> speechless um yeah because yeah, one of the original character, the original characters from the OG game, uh, were Elliot and Claris, and uh, you came in mm. with, for the sequel kids, uh, Will and Helen. <clears throat> so I am <clears throat> curious to know, like, what would Knight sound like if he was uh, uh, talking to Elliot and Claris? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ellie and Claris. Ellie and Claris. Oh, well, 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 well Ellie, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's it's just all interesting how things come together or why they come together. And I know that they were very specific. I I you know and, and I I love getting messages from from fans of the game and the projects and any of the projects really. Um I don't always have answers and I apologize for that cuz I'm just I'm just the lowly artist. <laughs> I I I don't have say in the direction. I don't have say in you know what's happening with the game or the storylines or anything like that i just get hired to and directed to do what's needed for the role you know and then you just kind of take it you run with it make it your own um but there's a, a, a lot of questions that come in and some have asked some some fans have asked um you know because there's a debate is it a, is it a he is it a she you know what is knights and as as we were you know conversing with the director in the sessions he was very adamant that he wanted it to be a gender neutral something where it's like it's not one or the other it, it's whatever the the player at the other side of it that's interacting is going to decide that whatever it is to you is what it is and what's brilliant about that is like not only was it smart because that's what the character is is a genderless being but one mm -hmm. thing that is very japanese uh is a lot of their innocent type characters usually have a very very light almost feminine type of voice mm -hmm. uh, like you go to even um dragon ball z over in japan i'm sure you know the main character of goku who's like big muscle bound hero but over mm -hmm. in japan he's played by a woman with a very light uh, lightish voice mm. um <laughs> which to me sounds very odd but i know culturally right. that's how they that's how they do <laughs> things yeah 
Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, like it wasn't as jarring for me when I heard Knights, uh, your portrayal of Knights. It was a, I mean, granted, yes, of course, it was a little strange because when you have this character existing for so long and you're like, okay, we're gonna hear this character speak for the first time, um, right? It's your imagination really kind of fills the blanks for you. So when you're finally hit with reality, it's just like, oh. <laughs> Like, oh, well, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's going to be. Okay. Well, uh, I'll take it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Guess I'm going to have to Guess I'm going to have to deal with this for the next 10 hours. <laughs> Oh, geez. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. No, no you're, 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 it was perfectly serviceable. In fact, oh, um, thank and, you. and like I said in the video, like your mm -hmm. voice has become so iconic with the character of Knights that I now at this point cannot imagine anybody else doing the character. Oh, well, that isn't that sweet. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, it's one of those things where you do want to do it justice. You know, like my, I, I don't know. I have this very high set of standards and bar with the work that I do and I, and even some things where I feel like it's not up to par but they're okay with it it's it's really their decision it's not me and they have their reasons why they're making these choices but at the end of the day I just really you know obviously the work I do is fun right first mm -hmm. and foremost it's amazingly it's it's you know I it's a dream come true it's like I, I get to do what I love every single day and I love the fact that it, you know, at the end of, of the, the project, when we complete it and it goes out there to the masses and to the people and just seeing the response of how it touched people in so many different ways is just overwhelming. I have no words, honestly, like it's indescribable in the messages that I get. And, and I just feel very honored to, to have been able to be the the actor that got to do that you know especially since it didn't have a voice um and so i just appreciate that um it was able to to happen and um i would love for them to do more you know like let's go back and and, and do more recording and to do more storylines and oh, games and yeah i think it would be amazing as an animation or even a series like i other uh, in addition to the game but oh for know, sure again. because like knights actually yeah. has quite a big history like he did have a, a short a short-lived comic run back in the late 90s uh, of course, the the original game is a classic, and it's been re-released uh, multiple times on the PlayStation 2, and the most recently, I think, in 2016 on Steam. Um, the original game that you played, the the sequel, Night Stranger Dreams, is still unfortunately stuck on the Wii. Uh, no HD remasters yet, and I think the game could use a bit of a touch-up. But um, if there's one person who also really wants another Knights game, it's Takashi Izuka. <laughs> he would love to make another Knights game and, in fact, has pitched yes. it, I I'm sure. And we all want another Knights game, too. Like, the Knights well, fans are... we need to are... sit down and talk about this. Yeah, we really do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because Knight f Knights fans are very adamant. We all want another Knights game. However, even I have openly admitted that if they were going to do another Knights game, this would be a bit of a betrayal they mm. would probably have to change up the gameplay formula because yeah. as, as beautifully mystical as it is to fly around in these environments and fly through the obstacle courses back in 1996, that was brand new and something that had never been done before to fly in real time 3d. But by today's standards, you see that and then some all over the place. So I think you'd have to bring something a little bit more to the table for the character. Uh, if, if it's just an amazing uh, an even more amazing story, because as much as I love the story mm -hmm. for Journey of Dreams, I have talked about in the video that it feels like it holds itself back a little bit because there are some underlining meanings with, going on with these characters and these kids and what they're talking about. And it's just like, oh, man, I feel like there's there's room for so much more uh, here. But it, I don't know if because mm -hmm. it's a game aimed for kids that uh, they don't allow themselves to go uh, to mm -hmm. go that deep and they hold it back a little bit. Uh, but it is what it is, and I, I still love the game for what it is. And I know a lot of people still love it a as well. But yeah, the time has come, and people were fearful when the sequel came out, saying it's been 11 years since we've seen Night's Game. Let's hope it's not another 11 years, and sadly it's been... It's been longer, I think. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, I don't even... Rem I don't remember... <laughs> My memory is so bad. <laughs> um, it, It's been quite a while, and maybe it wasn't the intention, you know, but things come into the picture. They 
there's distractions, other projects come in. And I'm sure it's not, <clears throat> it's not like you just pick up and say, oh, let's do this and let's go, which, you know, in a perfect world, it would be. But, you know, there's probably, you know, paperwork and reasons as to why and permissions and who knows. I mean, I don't know. There's always things behind the scenes that are taking place that sometimes stall or or halt certain things from moving forward in certain directions. But there's definitely been quite uh, a number of people that have messaged me just about it and, and that they would love to see it. So if, if everybody collectively announced in some way, hey, you know, we would like this, maybe they would listen and maybe they would kind of adapt in, in some capacity what um, a new, maybe a, a revamping, if you will, of of the storyline to fit um, in another kind of direction, but still have the the character and what he's about and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but who knows, you know? Well, yeah, because even I think about it sometimes, like, if they were going to do a third game, how would they do it? Would they have to bring Knights back to life? Because the ending is, of the second yeah. game, is left a little ambiguous, because even, right. even after his departure, there's that post credit scene where you just kind of see him, like, flying around. So it's like, oh, he might still be out there somewhere, despite, you know, being dead. <laughs> Sp <laughs> spoilers for those who haven't played the game. It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. One other funny thing I remember the first time. <laughs> shortly after I received uh, it was an actual letter in the mail an actual letter and um, I, I don't recall because there's been a couple things that get sent to like say my agent or my manager and then they send it to me and they're like something came for you I'm like what is it and I remember in this letter they oh they were from London <laughs> right and uh i remember she went on to tell me that they thought i was british because that the accent was spot on going back to that little conversation about that yeah so i, I, I that thought that you were, were british actual, too <laughs> <laughs> that they thought i was actually from london i'm like no <laughs> i'm just a spanish girl <laughs> that can sound and you know mesh i guess i'm a chameleon i always have been you Shoot. know that's just kind of my nature but to do the work i you really just kind of immerse yourself in the truthfulness of whatever it is that you're playing um it it, it has to be that way and even though i'm not a person from london i i do have high respect for them and i love the accent, it's very contagious. I, I don't know if you're the same way. Yeah, but. see, as I, in fact, people know this, like, especially when I'm doing, mm -hmm. when I'm doing shows or doing things, uh, mm -hmm. I, I will bleed into other accents just accidentally, be it either right? if it's British or if it's the Australian <laughs> type. Uh -huh. That one's also or very fun southern, to do. like, I'm ready for some southern fried, you know. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's right, my friend. <laughs> there it is. Oh, I love that. That's that, not an easy one to do. That's a tougher one. Let's go I and think. have some fun down under and play that nice game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just love to have fun with my own voice. We we know how it is. I got to keep yep. myself entertained. Yep. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I'm never bored. <laughs> I'm never, right? I, I have so, I have so many hours. people with me. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> I'm never alone. <laughs> I'm never alone. This uh, is true. Uh, yes, I would definitely give you an Oscar for that performance. Just make sure you don't <laughs> make sure you don't slap me when you come up to receive it on stage. Uh, <laughs> okay, I <got> it. <laughs> Now this and now this show is dated. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that's hilarious! You are too funny. Oh, thank you. And just what do you think you're doing, skulking around here, knights? Oh, look at you! <gasps> that was awesome. <laughs> I believe your line is supposed to be like, oh, Rihanna, you coward, let them go. Oh, that one, yes, <laughs> yeah. my bad. I got, I, this is what happens when you hear another great performer. You're just like, oh, oh wow. Lost I, track. Thank you. Rihanna, you coward, let them go. <sighs> coward, moi, you're the puppet that can't do anything without borrowing power from visitors. A puppet. <laughs> Puppet for wise men. Ah! What? 
Let's see which one of us is just a mere puppet then. You oh. and me, one on one. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've, I've, I've got that game memorized. I don't have the lines memorized. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm such a dork. It's like, I love these performances. I've got the whole script memorized. <laughs> <laughs> you or me. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> That was such a fun. That's a that was such a fun project for sure. Oh, One of my favorites. Definitely. <laughs> you're on. I'll make sure that you're in no shape to get in my way ever again. I'll deliver your heads to Master Wiseman myself. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Riala Real, 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 Real was very intimidating. <laughs> Was who played Riala? Is it Roger Jackson? I do not Wait, know. Who, <laughs> I feel like if it wasn't him, it was oh. What it was me the whole time. No, it was you. It was you. It should have been. <laughs> oh, thank you. I would. Where thought. were you when we needed Riala? Uh, in high school. <laughs> <laughs> so was I. <laughs> I, I. I was getting bad grades in high school. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, it just, it, yeah, it, it was an awesome experience, and Kevin and everybody at Webtone was, it was just, they were amazing to work with, you know? Those were good old times. <laughs> yes, and, and it's it's an industry that I so desperately want to get into, and I'm so proud that I actually had the opportunity, and I was, uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I got cast for several characters in a, in a video game for Steam called Pop-Up Dungeon. Uh, nice. And, and, it, and it's a production that also has John Delancey in it. Uh, mm. so that's, that was pretty cool. That's pretty um, awesome. But yeah, um, trying to get, uh, unfortunately, like, especially in today's age where like the technology is at everybody's mm -hmm. fingertips, like uh, mm -hmm. back, uh, back in the late eighties and early nineties, you think of the Kevin Smith story where he had to sell off his comic book collection just to be able to borrow a camera so that he could make his independent movie and uh, mm. it, it became a success yeah. story. It's like now everybody's got <laughs> that technology in their pocket. In your um, phone, exactly, <laughs> or where, wherever tablets, I, iPads, iPhones, or and, and whatever, yeah, Samsung. Yeah, and I've talked with uh, Quentin Flynn, and he was telling me about the stories, like how back in uh, when he moved over here to America, he made some demos on some cassette tapes and just sent them out to studios, and it's like pff, long gone are those days. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and that's how he got into the industry, and it's just like, well, that doesn't help me. <laughs> No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, unless, unless I decided to go vintage and record my own voice on a cassette tape and be like, here you guys go. And they're just like, what? <laughs> and they listen out of morbid curiosity. Wow. Uh, and that was a thing. That was a thing back then. I, I, I mean, I, I never got that. I didn't do that. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't in that area of, of things. I actually didn't even have a, a demo till later. I started booking things randomly just by just random. <laughs> you know, I, I remember even because I started, like I mentioned earlier, I started on camera. So I was doing a lot of commercials and print work and just all things in front of the camera. And you know, I had a background in, in music training and uh, vocally as a singer and that sort of thing. And, and the acting just kind of you combine it and there's your voice act. You know, that's a that's what is required to be a voice actor. Um, but it was one of those things where my agent's like, have you ever done voiceover? <laughs> I'm like, what's that? <laughs> oh yeah, and that, that's got that's got to be one of the what most. That? Yeah, that, 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 that has to be one of the most annoying thing when you're a professional <laughs> voice actor and you get a question from a, a follower or something. It's like, have you considered doing real acting? As if this is if, as if this is fake. Oh, oh that is. <laughs> I have to say, it is, it is a pet peeve of mine when people do not understand that this is acting. Like just because you're not. The physical part of it, meaning, you're, I mean, it's very physical because you do move around, you move your body and you do all that uh, when you're getting into a character, but you're not in front of a camera. Just because you're not in front of and being filmed or on a, a live stage for theatrical um, things, it does not <laughs> minimize the fact that it is still acting. I, I'm, I'm a, you know, Meisner is my technique that I use and I use it every day. It is in everything that I do. And whether it's on in front or behind, you know, behind a microphone or in front of a camera, it's still applicable because it is the way that stories 
are written. You know, what am I saying? How do I feel about it? You know, and personalize it in some way and emotionalize it. And these are the technical things that people think, oh, we just get words and you just read them. Yeah, and, and a lot of people don't no. realize there's a lot of hard work and, <clears throat> and stuff that goes into this. And there is, and it's muscle memory for sure. And you could eat, you could make the argument because of the strain that we have to do on our voices that mm-hmm. it, it's more challenging than even some on-screen performances where uh, right. so, sometimes your voice doesn't have to be what carries the uh, the, the role, but sometimes you're just a presence and how you say mm-hmm. it. Uh, right. Exactly. And I, I coach from time to time and I'll get <laughs> messages from some people that want to work and they, they want to get in the industry. And I said, well, let me do, you know, a, a, a quick one on one just to kind of see where you're at and see what I would recommend, because I want people to work. I don't want you to not, you know, I want you to understand there's part of it. It's twofold. Part of it is understanding the work, obviously, in, in terms of, OK, you're going to be reading cold cold scripts, meaning you're not going to have much time to review a script before you have to submit on something. And a lot of times, like I have um, clients where, like yesterday even, um, I am uh, I also do advertising campaigns and commercials. So Cadillac is one of my clients. I love them to death, but I never get the scripts until 15, maybe 10 minutes before the session. Mm-hmm. And, y- you know, it, it's... You know, it's got to be under a certain time constraint. You've got it, you know, if you have a 30 second spot, sometimes the dialogue has to be read in 15 seconds and it's fast and you've got to have control. Yeah. Of that. You have to have breath control. You have to have clarity in the enunciation and pronunciations and also not sound like you're rushed or running out of air. And that requires exercising and and building and creating the muscle memory that it takes to be able to do those things in a short amount of time because these guys need a quick turnaround like this needs to be done now like we got to go we don't have time to do this and have it take five hours (laughs) it needs to be done in under an hour or hour or less yeah you're Um, right i've i've actually seen and done some of those where mm -hmm. you've you've got you have a 15 second window and you've got to say this almost paragraph in that time and I've looked at it and I've attempted it several times and uh, because I have my own you know I've got my own studio yeah Um, so where I'm recording it and I after I listen to my recording it's like okay that sounded like it was uh within the time mark and I look at it and it's like 35 seconds (laughs) it's like (laughs) okay hold up (laughs) let me look at this how is Mm -hmm. how is it possible to say all of this in 15 seconds and Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you just got to make it work. Or if you just have a really good uh, director or someone who's willing to work with you, you can ad lib mm-hmm. it and you can figure out like, yeah. all right. Because even Harrison Ford said like they put the stuff on paper, but you can't say it. <laughs> right. Uh, it, so- it can't sound like you're reading it off a piece of paper. That's where the personalization of it com- comes in. And in the Meisner technique, I love because it's it works solely with your imagination. And and voiceover is all imagination. You don't have and we covered this earlier where I don't have my scene partner in the room with me to feed off their energy or to feed off of what they're doing. I I don't have those reactions and I don't have any of that to work with. All I have is my own um, imagination and the interpretation that I, uh, you know, have to truthfully believe that this is what's happening in uh, under the umbrella of of the, uh, you know, imaginary circumstance that's given to me. Yeah, I'm not really flying around, but I have to believe and and treat it truthfully as if I was, and connect to something that's real in that capacity. But it, it's important to exercise that if you want to go into it. Obviously, we're not talking about you know if if people want to go into the industry, but it, it is a lot of work, and and um, but it can be am- amazing <laughs> if you put the work in. And, and this goes across the board in anything you do, you know. It's gonna, you know, come, things will come to fruition in ways that you wouldn't even imagine. So you just never know. (laughs) Yeah, it it really is such a fun process. And I think you really do have to have a vivid and very fun imagination to be able to Mm -hmm. go into a job like this. Because it's, it's the same thing with like those Disney mascot people where Mm -hmm. you, you have to be able to, all right, William Morris is going to disappear. I am no longer William Morris. (laughs) Jules uh, has to disappear. You no longer exist. There is only this character character i am yeah. this character how would this person do this and i'm going to be mm-hmm. this for a while and imagination very pretend 
as if this character was real and everything is a reality to you and how you mm-hmm. react and how and behave. Um, right. And I love, I, I love pretending <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> See, so then you would be perfect. The one thing that I have to add with, with the trend in the casting now that they've gone more into the, what's called truthful casting. I don't know if you've heard of what that is. Um, in, in, in other words, um, certain projects, right. Um, mm-hmm. that re- say, for example, the character is of Indian descent or, Oh American. no. It yes. It has to be specific. Yeah. Oh. So because I've played characters in the past in the Bratz, I did some stuff for Bratz years ago and I actually got cast as four of wait, three of them. I remember I played the Caucasian, the, the white girl, the Latino girl, and then there was an African American, um, and I did all three <laughs> because I, I I can like I said I'm a chameleon I can mesh into these um, personalities and and not to you know stereotype anything or anything like that but you know there's just it, it's acting <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know but but I so, but I really hate this new thing where you suddenly right. have to match it because to me like that's severely limiting in the talent pool it cause, is because like, uh, like one famous example is uh going back with disney uh in the 90s there was a disney cartoon called tailspin where a really uh, sp- uh spanish character named don carnage was played by jim C- the legendary jim cummings and he has such a iconic voice for that character and then they did a reboot of ducktales uh, very very <laughs> recently and that character pops up there and of course the, they had to replace jim cummings who's no longer playing this iconic character and they replaced it with some guy who's more ethnically matching mm, and mm-hmm. it sounds very under like n- no offense yeah. to the, no offense to the guy who plays him i'm sure he's doing the best he can but right. it's like how can you take away such an iconic voice for a character and replace it with a, a, a uh, it, it's so frustrating. And, yeah. yeah, and and it was very frustrating for everybody for them to do that. And right. it's like, yeah, I feel like we're going backwards when it comes yes. to <laughs> when it comes to yes. ac- acceptance <laughs> and all that. I feel like I don't know. When, I think it should be whoever the best person for the job is. <laughs> let it be them. If they happen to be yellow or green or purple or orange, <laughs> it doesn't matter. If they're perfect for that role, that's going to give it the life that it's required of it. And so be it. I don't think it needs to go in a direction where it's backtracking in any capacity. I've actually worked on a couple things. Um, I- I'm on a couple shows. I don't know if they're out yet. Yet. Uh, Because they're quite recent um, through Paramount Streaming and Amazon, right? Amazon uh, Prime Video Streaming. And one of the directors that I was working with um, at the time shared a story. And and I have actually spoke to quite a few directors that they're not happy. (laughs) This is making their job even more harder, as if it wasn't harder already, uh, yeah, you know? Because I mean, it, so, it's terrible. It really is terrible to put that sort yeah, of Yeah, and, and I, ultimately what what's going to happen is that the, the work is going to become watered down. Not to say that everyone is, is terrible, but it, it, I think they're looking for, for checking these boxes that probably might not be a good idea for the, for the big picture of the project you know it's it's got to be for the greater good of the series or or the game or whatever right it cannot be a personal thing it is not a race thing it's just what's going to be the better suited thing for this but unfortunately things are taking a slight turn into the left direction and so who knows (laughs) what's going to happen yeah but some people are not happy (laughs) for sure so you say that you've coached uh, before other people on mm-hmm. uh, bringing them up. All right, so you don't have to mention names, but how okay. many how many people have you coached that you feel maybe do not have a future in this? Like, what's the worst example like of <laughs> that you've tried to teach somebody and you, <laughs> and you're just like, oh my god? You know what's funny is I actually have conversations with people. Um, and it might not even have anything to do with if they're not good at it or not. It's just it takes a certain personality type because in addition to the performance, you know, the delivery of, of the lines and, and the recording and all these other things that we're juggling, there's 
a certain personality type where I feel, and I'm honest with people, if your personality is one that needs to have a set schedule where you're like from eight to to five, and then at exactly 12.01, I'm going to lunch and there it is, and you have to have that structure in your routine, this is not for you, you know? And the reason for that is this work, and I'll explain it very briefly, voiceover is usually the last piece of the puzzle that gets placed on a project, right? For example, if it's if it's a commercial, I had a friend that booked a Super Bowl commercial. He, he got the call Thursday to record Friday for it to be released on that Sunday. <laughs> you know, it's it's very last minute. So you have to be one that can A, find excitement in rolling with the punches, be able to um, do quick turnarounds, very short amount of period of time to do the work and submit it back and also be available within moments notice. Like you don't have, there's no set anything. <laughs> it's just, you know, that you're, you may get a call and you have to be ready at a moment's notice. And some people do not, they, that just doesn't work for them. You know, no judgment. It's just, everyone's wired differently. So yeah, some people like having a more structured schedule and a more yeah. structured lifestyle. But when you're, when so, you're a voice actor or an actor in general, you're, you're, in, you're in general, very much, yeah. yeah, you're very much on call anytime, any place. Yep. <laughs> I, I kind of say it's almost like a baby delivering service. And then when they call, it's like, hurry up, hurry up. It's like a fire or, or a fireman. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very much that you don't know when they're going to call, but when they call, you better be ready. <laughs> oh, for, um, and for so sure. that's just how it is. So. <laughs> I like it. I, I, you know, I thrive on it. When I don't get a call, I'm like, what's wrong? What's going on? There has to be something wrong. <laughs> now, maybe you can help explain this to me because obviously, yeah. you know, I want to do this. Is yeah. it is it a career that you feel can pay the bills or is it one of those that you're at the mercy of uh, hoping to God you get a call? Whereas instead of like an average job, full time job where you can get a paycheck every week or biweekly, uh, is this something that you feel like you need to uh, consider or could it be a safe gig? It's it, it's how you play the game, right? So it can be very lucrative. I mean, if you play your cards right, again, there's two. It's it's twofold. So part of it is the acting portion of it and, and the talent side of it, right? But the other part that's just as important, if not even more important, is your business savviness of it, because you have to treat it as this. And this is how I've explained it to people. If you had a smoothie shop right and someone comes to your smoothie shop and says i would like a, a vanilla a, a banana and strawberry shake <laughs> you're like coming right up that's pretty much how you get the orders for voiceover but if you're the type of person that says okay you, they just ordered a banana and strawberry shake but let me give you the chocolate one i think you'll like the chocolate one why why do you say that because i like the chocolate one well this is not about you the point is you have to check your ego at the door and treat it as a business. Treat it as you've got clients and they will come back. So realistically, if you can combine those two things, strengthen your capabilities, right? And your professionalism in getting things in on time, having that discipline and structure within yourself with whatever that time frames need to be obviously they're, they're different every day but if you can treat it as that you will be very successful and absolutely you can i'm not even kidding you five six seven figure range it can it can be done i've seen it yep i live it <laughs> it's fine <laughs> you but you but again you have to play your cards right and you have to be very strategic you know what I mean? Accept what you can do. Do not try to be all things to all people. Some people think, oh, I, I, I got to learn another language if that's not what you do. If that's not your thing, don't spend time doing something outside of where you are. You start with where you are strong now, today, right now. And then you piece together, you grow, you work on things and develop 
you know, some things down the road, accents or things of this nature that you can create a larger variety of things that you can do. So you're not just typecast into one category, then yeah, that broadens a little bit more, but don't force it. I think if you just kind of stay in, in the place and honor who you are and really, really digest and process all the things that you can bring to the table as an individual artist um, and, and connect it to what's going to be given in, in for you to do in the work, you will do very well. It's the people that I think try to mimic other people's careers or follow in other people's footsteps in a way that does slightly do a, a disservice because everybody's story is different. And you can't, you know what I mean? There's no cookie cutter um, rule of thumb that you need to do. I would say the only thing is just listen to what's being asked if someone needs something and provide that great service. You know, you go to, to a restaurant that you like to eat and, and you go, why? For the food or for the service? You know, everyone has different reasons. Um, and, and so if you can kind of keep that in the back of your mind, um, there are certain things to to do that you can market yourself and, and just get yourself to the right clients. If you know who you are and what you're able to deliver, then you can focus on putting that in front of the right people that need what you do instead of trying to, you know, give them what you think they want. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I've been in that hot seat where I've, I've wanted to give people what they want. And sometimes that's the hardest thing to do, especially if they come, mm-hmm. to, you, come to you specifically thinking and yeah. expecting you to do something that you're not even sure if you can do, but they feel mm-hmm. you can do. It's like, oh, God, yeah. I, I want to deliver. But because <laughs> it's I a feel, big responsibility. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. Because, boy, if I mess this up, <laughs> not only do I lose this person as a as a client, but that may potentially harm other people that want me later. Uh so have you ever had in uh, any strong memories, like good and bad? Like what, what is your worst, scariest memory? And what is like your most cherished memory in this industry? In this industry? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. My goodness, it gave me chills. Um, the best memory <clears throat> and the scariest memory. Wow, this is really kind of making me think in in tech because there's been so many different things that I've experienced, some kind of quirky, weird, and (laughs) um, (laughs) the wrath of the Knights fans, in case you blew it. (laughs) I know, right? That was like, oh, what if this fails? Um, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna gonna cause a war between America and and like the UK. <laughs> right? All no, of- I don't want to do that. No, Lord, no. <laughs> she, um, she she botched she botched the night's performance. Well, that's it. Her life is forfeit. <laughs> <laughs> well, wh- one sweet memory that comes to mind I, um, before I say the scary one, I think I'll start with the sweet one. Um, so the sweet one, I re- I, re- I worked on Guitar Hero. This was years ago too i don't know if you knew that (laughs) so guitar hero but the singing of it so it was guitar we were doing a lot of rock singing and um i was with an all male cast (laughs) that's the thing with me i'm always with either all you know in the singing side of things okay they either place me with the the boys (laughs) or i'm with the big black girls (laughs) and i love it because it's like i just feed off of their energy and there's something that i think maybe i bring a balance to them so at this session uh, i walk in and the producer she just she was like oh my god you're you're here and i was like what did I miss something? Like what? What? <laughs> and she and she was like, kind of fan fan girl. But I I don't see myself as anything else than this is just what I do. It's not who I am. You know what I mean? Like I'm I, I don't look at myself. Oh, as you're so you're not like one of those like way. oh that's no. right I'm here love me. <laughs> right? No, I mean I I do love myself obviously, <laughs> but I don't look at myself that way. That sometimes I I get responses from people. So I walked in. She gave me a hug. And she's like. <gasps> I love 
Rent because I sang on the movie soundtrack for for the movie Rent. And and she knew that. I was like, how did you know? <laughs> Who told you? And and you know, I I never think anyone's Googling me. Like, who wants to hear about me? Like, what do I do? Who cares, right? And so I, I'm flattered. Like, that that was like, <laughs> aw, yeah, like... let me give you another hug. <laughs> All right, let's, go, and... let's Google Jules. All right, how can we get her canceled? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't say that. That would hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> what, has she, what has she done? <laughs> yep, yep. Um... There's this memory that does come to mind. It's not, it wasn't a scary memory per se. It was more of something that I, I left crying. Oh, no. <laughs> Where it was just, this is part of the, the lessons that I had to learn. And so I was working, um, I did some, I'm bilingual, so I do some things in Spanish. Um, and at the time I was doing this project for, it was an internal project for, I believe it was either Tele, Telemundo or Univision. I don't know if you're familiar with those Spanish stations. Yeah, I, I'm familiar with Telemundo. Okay, so Telemundo. Um, and we were doing, a, I can't remember what it was. It was like Feed the Homeless, some kind of documentary thing. And I had to do some singing, right? And I remember he, I wasn't getting it for whatever reason. I'm not even sure. I don't remember that part of it, but I was having a hard time getting the syncopation of it was just kind of weird to me. Like I just wasn't gravitating to it. It was taking me longer. Uh, now I could do it in my sleep, <laughs> right? But back then I couldn't, I was still learning things. I was still kind of, you know, rough around the edges, if you will. And the producer, he's, he just said, you are so good and you are so talented, but right now I need you to leave. And I was like, what? Oh, <laughs> He's man. like, yeah, we're not going to get this today. You need to just go home. We need to take a break. I need a break. Because he, he was frustrated. <laughs> and I cried and he beat me up in a way that was tough love, yes. Oh, but because you were doing what wrong? I wasn't getting the syncopation of something that needed to get done right. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I've had producers yell and scream. Oh, God. Yeah. The narcissists are true. <laughs> they do are ex they do exist out oh, cause, there. Because that, that, honestly, that would be my biggest uh, scariest thing. Because, like, I don't want to go home crying either. And Because you better <laughs> believe that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, here's the thing is it, it helps develop a thicker skin, which you need. You need to have a thicker skin in this industry because you're going to hear a lot of no's it's not always going to be because oh you suck or you're not great it's just it's the nature of the business and it's got to be done a certain way and it's got to be right and if it isn't then you know this is a circumstance that might happen <laughs> um but at the end of the day like i came back again like I, I didn't lose the job it was just one of those things where it's like okay we need to break but he wasn't very um, tactful in how he <laughs> yeah. explained things, which is probably, I will say this in retrospect, why I wasn't understanding what he wanted me to do. Because he wasn't tactful in the way that he explained it. Yeah, and unfortunately, and so, it feels like a lot of these producers and directors, they want to be tactful, but because they do this on such a regular basis, it gets yep. so frustrating for them that it's just, that kind of goes out the window and they forget themselves. Yeah, and so you can't take it personally. That's the thing, like, I learned that that day. <laughs> That's why I'm sharing the story, because I learned it that day. I came back and it's like, we squashed it. He apologized, whatever. Um, but we got the work done and I continue to work. I continue to get called back in to do things and what have you. But what I learned about myself is that, yeah, there's gonna be times that I'm gonna have a hard time with something or, <clears throat> you know, it might take me longer to do, but what do I need? to do for myself so that I don't run into that situation is just keep my chops up for Christ's sake. <laughs> it's my <laughs> job. It's my fault. You know what I mean? And that's the thing, you know, with voiceover, it's so, you don't have a rehearsal. There's no rehearsal time. Your rehearsal is if you can get with a great coach or take a workshop that's actually a legitimate workshop. There's people out there that are just sharks. And, and selling you, you know, hamster wheel kind of stories. Or get the and script that doesn't early. Work. What was that? Or get the script early. 
Yeah. It, you don't get the script early sometimes, unfortunately. So you have to just exercise it wherever you can exercise it so that when these things come up, you're ready and you're not in a position to go freeze. What do I do? <laughs> I didn't expect this. <laughs> and it, and it is what it is. But I learned. I didn't take it personally, you know. Um, and, and he actually was very instrumental in my life moving forward in other um, ways because he taught me a lot in, in a hard way, <laughs> right? It doesn't always have to be. And I'm not saying that it should. But, you know, these are things you're dealing with different personalities. And when they're under the gun with the deadline, you don't know what version of them you're going to get. And so you have to know that and respect that it's not about you. It's about just getting the thing done <laughs> and doing a good job. And let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So what? All right. Here's a since we are going on pretty long. Uh, oh, <laughs> I lost a good time. <laughs> oh, no, trust me. We can keep going. All, all, there's no time <laughs> limit here. But all right, so what is your dream role? Hmm, my dream role. I mean, one of my dream roles is stealing nights away from you, but. Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Honestly, if you did, I would be so proud of you. I would be like, you go, William. And then, yes. you, and then you go into the back room, that like, fucker. <laughs> 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 no. I gotta be a good sport. No, I would never do that. Well, um, like a specific <laughs> dream role, I I don't. I'd love to be a Disney princess. I think. I mean, I, I've worked with Disney before, but I, I really want to like, yeah, because they're fun. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know. It I'd really like is. That. I think that would be fun. Yeah, there's so many Disney characters. Like, oh yeah, I'd jump at the chance to be playing like, like Basil of Baker Street, my good fellow. Uh, like that'd be fun, but yeah, well, like, good luck if we'll ever see that again. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, just Disney characters in general, like getting the ability to play them would be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, and they're so. I mean, they're all so different, <laughs> you know. Like they have their little quirks and things, and I don't know. I think it would be just fun to do that. <laughs> oh, it really went hot dog. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, so Disney princess, any particular princess? Hmm. Do you see yourself as more of an Ariel, little mermaid swimming around? Or what? yes. Oh my God, yes. I was also gonna say Pocahontas because I let. She's so sweet, you know, just like the sweet. Um. I hate oh. that Pocahontas gets such a bad rap. <laughs> it's. I, I, I like why. that movie. Because it's because it's not accurate to history and cultural appropriation. Oh, stop with that! Does everything have to be like that? Why can't we just have fun? Because it's twenty twenty two. Let our imaginations. I, I don't like this. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it either. Like I want to have fun. I'm gonna throw fun. a tantrum. Mm, I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just crazy. It just it's just crazy because. <laughs> We're limiting ourselves by that. Like, oh, if we I don't agree. have our imaginations to play or run, run with, we have nothing. Honestly, because that's an escape. That's an outlet. And if you take that away from certain people, it's going to, it can. I, I am not saying I'm a psychologist because I'm not, but I feel like some people need escapes from time to time, which is why the video game world is so amazing. You know, like people need little breaks, you know, and just like, let's think about something else. Let's look at a positive instead of like, oh, got to be all bad. <laughs> Bigger than the film industry. Who would have thought? It, billions. Oh, my gosh. Who would have thought? Yeah. Back in the you 90s, know? who would have thought video games would surpass the movie industry? <laughs> William, you and I need to get together and create a video game. That's what we need to do. Oh, I would yeah, I'd jump at the chance. And I've, I, I have a lot of people that I know personally that are currently Let's do it. making their own video games. And it's like they and they need voices. And it's like, yes, <laughs> let's just make the let's just make the magic happen and like make beautiful works together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be amazing. Honestly. No, you, get, but... you call my agent, Dole, and we'll make something happen. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Everything you're doing is, like, real worthy. Have you done? You need to put this on the reel. Seriously. <laughs> you think I've got talent? You think I can make it in the industry? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Finally, my husband can come home. Oh, I love it. Oh, my God. <laughs> you're amazing. 
mean? I had no idea, William. I mean, I knew you, you, you said you've done a few things, but I didn't know you had this much range. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, my dear. I do try oh, to do my you've best. You've been studying. <laughs> you've been studying? Hmm. Oh, nice. <laughs> Let's see. So, are you familiar with the song from Night's Journey of Dream? Well, Night's Period, because it's in both of them. Mm. The Dream Dream song. In the night's dream delight. Have you ever sung it? I want want to see you standing there. Oh, no, I've never sang it. I don't know it well enough to sing it. Yeah, it's a a duet. (laughs) I need to learn it. <gasps> we should do a duet. I'm I gonna would, learn it, yeah. and then we're gonna do a duet. <laughs> oh, I would, hey, yes, please. I, I would love to add uh, singing, well, stuff to the demo reel as well, because of course. <laughs> and, and you want to know what's interesting uh, that I've mm. learned? A lot of voice actors usually have a history within uh, singing, be it whether, yeah, be it with their family or just themselves. And when I was looking at it, it's like, well, hot damn, so do I. I've got a musical history going back. 80 years with uh, my grandfather, oh. with my grandfather mm-hmm. being one of the first uh, uh, black men on the cover of Downbeat magazine. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was, and that, that was a time and a half in of itself. And of, yeah. course, and of course that carried on over to his children and my father and the, the, the family continuing their musical career. And now mm-hmm. here I am wanting to go into a different direction where it's like, yeah, I can do the singing and stuff, but I also mm-hmm. want to do voices for cartoons. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the beauty of both worlds, I think, you know, because I've, I'm not at liberty to discuss a lot of the thing, the newer projects that are about to come out that are not out yet, but I can kind of say a little bit of, of what we got to do. Yeah, but I was I've, about to I've ask gotten, you, like, what's what, what's coming out that you're working on? Yeah, so I, I, I think I am able to speak. Um, it's, an, it's a new animated series called Camp Smash, and that's coming out on HBO, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. It should already, I don't know if it already is or it's about to, but if you look it up, I'm sure you can kind of find it. Um, I actually voiced eight of the characters on there. Oh, man. Yes. I was very busy with that one, and that was actually recorded through COVID around, I mean, because it's all remote, so I was working from home, and it was, I think we worked for about a year. That one was pretty frequent yeah so i've i've unfortunately only worked in video games and when it comes to payment in video games we know how unfortunate it is that there's no royalties or residuals right Um, yes so it's that one flat service fee which uh for me it was (laughs) i got like 500 bucks um Mm -hmm. how does it work with animations such as this are you getting Mm -hmm. uh are you getting payments all the time, even like say twenty years later, if they decide to re-release it, like on a streaming service? Are you still get? Are you see, are you seeing something from this? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I actually something from uh, I did something called Pinky Malinky a couple years ago on Nickelodeon, and that still is. Uh, you still see the residuals for that from time to time. They vary; they're not all the same, you know. And so it's always kind of different. Rent is still. You know, we still, and, and these are years later. Obviously, rent, I think I did in 05, which is quite a bit ago. And, you know, um, it, it depends on the project. Some do have royalty based usually, and some are buyout kind of. It, it just depends what's negotiated in your contract and whatever the budget from the company yeah. is. And that was the biggest um, but, uh, thing about contracts is that, yeah, uh, especially back in the early, late, late 90s and early 2000s, not all the video games <clears throat> deals got contracts. So even though it's a common practice today that residuals and royalties yeah. don't happen in video games, that doesn't mean that they can't. <clears throat> and if there was no contract right. at the time, well, then that suddenly it's a buyout situation or yeah. or you got to pay them. Yeah. I know if they use your image and likeness, and in some cases I've seen in castings that they've sent where um, they want you to submit like your headshot or a photo of yourself so that they can kind of base um, the character around not just your voice, but what it's going to look like as they develop whatever, you know, hair color, eye color, blah, blah, blah. And so um, they do pay additional when it has when it does pertain to um if your image is part of it or your likeness and things like that 
Ugh, isn't that fun? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so, like, for example, uh, Nickelodeon. Uh, you mm-hmm. said you played a character, what, on that? So Nickelodeon was um, a song. I oh, did. Okay. It, it's it's actually, if you look, it's, so it was recorded, Nickelodeon owns it, right? And then now I do believe it's streaming, I want to say Netflix, if I'm not mistaken. It, it, Pinky Malinky, if you look it up, I'm sure it'll guide you wherever it is. But um, it's the epis- episode called Song, and um, I just sang this song, and the whole, <laughs> the characters are enthralled with this song. It's like a hit song for them. They're like, oh, I gotta get it. Where do we download it? I want to download it. And it's just really about the song. It's called Song, and it's about the song. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, so, and that's what I did. So how, how much usually do you get for residuals on something like that? Wait, sorry. I'm hearing. Uh, saying, mm-hmm. yeah, how much do you usually get for residuals on something like that? Um, it varies. It, it all varies on whatever the rate is or whatever the streaming is. Sorry, there's something playing in the background. I'm not sure what it is. Do you hear that? No, uh, I don't hear anything. Um, yeah, oh. I'm, yeah, nothing's picking up on my end. There it is. Something accidentally started playing, and I couldn't hear you very well. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> okay. So it, it just varies. It varies how much it streams. It varies. It, it's. It could be. I mean, if I were to give like an estimation, it could be five dollars, maybe two dollars to thousands. You know, <laughs> it all just varies. There's no. It, it, it's not set. I guarantee you, if I got any residuals at all, that's pretty much what it would be, pennies. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> thanks. What, what is rent this month? Twelve hundred. Okay. They add up, William, and that's all that matters. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's like you know what? I don't care. I still want it. <laughs> I, I gotta have right? it. It's like a drug. Mm-hmm. I need it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, there, there's a lot of things uh, pertaining to that. Obviously, everyone kind of has a thing in, in terms of like where they start. Games is an arena, um, animation. There's a lot of YouTube channels, animated YouTube channels that are, you know, pretty busy. Um, oh, that's yeah. one of the other things I'm on a, the American Girls series. That one I think I can talk about. I think that's out. Um, but, you know, these are, you know, just ongoing. There's always a new episode that comes every so often and they'll bring you back in. So it's nice to have... Um, uh, to be able to to play a role that keeps coming back, you know, it might not be in every episode, but it comes back here and again every so often. For sure, a uh, lot of fun. So, cool. <laughs> for sure. So, I think uh, this might bring our fun special interview to an end. But I, if you want to, you are always more than welcome to come back. We are working on many projects all the time, be it. Uh, cool. videos retrospective series reviews and uh we might even have you come back to do uh, a special spot for any of those particular projects who knows Ooh, that'd be fun <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah you know how to find me <laughs> <laughs> we're pretty much connected now you're not going to get rid of me like quentin flynn no <laughs> yeah, quentin, Qu- quentin flynn has tried <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no no anytime like i enjoy this like i was telling you earlier I, I want to be able to like create platforms where I can engage a little bit more and just kind of you, people have questions. If I'm able to answer them, I'm happy to. Sometimes I don't have the answers, so I apologize for that. But um, I, I love hearing from people and sharing memories and stories. And yeah, this was fun. Oh yeah, even working together in the future. Who knows? Yeah, it could happen. Like I said. <laughs> so guys, <laughs> thank you so much for hanging out with us. I'm Liam Morse with the Better Gaming. This has been an evening with Jules. Is there anything you'd like to tell the audience before we close the door? You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and if they want to follow me, they can find me at, at Jules Giselle on all social. Wonderful. Well, guys, <laughs> it's been great. And we, we will see you next time. Y'all be good Bye. now. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Elmo knows what you need.